This is a brief video on the introduction to the endocrine system. If you have questions afterwards, just contact me through email, through my website, or on Twitter. So let's get started. The best way I find to describe the endocrine system is to compare it to the nervous system. So we have the nervous system over here, and we'll put the endocrine system over here. Why do I compare both of these two? Because they're both a means of communication within the body. What are the name of the cells of the nervous system? They are called, what? They are called neurons. Neurons, here you have the cell body, the soma, extensions coming off, called dendrites, the long axon with its terminal. And then they connect onto another neuron and so forth. What's the name of the tissue in the endocrine system? They are called glands. For example, in the head, you have the pituitary gland, the anterior and the posterior divisions. And the neck, what's the name of that gland? That gland is the thyroid. And then you have the four little glands sitting behind it. Those are the parathyroid. Just simple examples for right now. What's another way to compare and contrast these two? The nervous system is a way to communicate directly. The endocrine system is not. It's more an indirect means of communication. How can you think about these two? Well, here's a little analogy I put together with something I saw plus some of my own ideas. All right, let's say you're over here. You're in Chicago. You're in your New York. It's winter time. That's why I chose these cities. There's a bunch of snow, and here's a little sad face. So you're a little depressed. So you pick up your phone. I guess this is supposed to be a Blackberry or something, and you want to call somebody who's in some sunny weather. You want to ask them about the sun. So here's somebody, you know, chilling in the Caribbean, you know, having a good time. Here's a son, just like me. That's why I'm choosing the Caribbean. And, you know, here's a phone. And you directly communicate with them. You ask them, you send them your message, you ask them or me about the son. So again, it is direct. What's indirect? Okay, so here you are again. You're sitting. Uh, here's the snow over there. You're not too happy, a little bit upset. But instead of using your phone, you go on your computer and you start typing on your uh, keyboard. And of course, you are on Facebook. Facebook, as you know, you make a post. The message goes out to so many people, all your hundreds and thousands and millions and billions of friends, right? But not everybody is in the sun, just some people. And those are the people who are going to respond to you, right? They're either going to respond positively to you or they're going to respond negative, negatively to you, right? Like or dislike. In the endocrine system, we would call this positive or negative feedback. What else can we do with this analogy? Okay, it's direct and it is also fast. You know my phone number, you know that person's phone number, so you call or you text them directly. Over here, it's indirect and it is slow. Why is it slow? Because you made your post here on Facebook and now you're waiting for everybody to read your message and to respond to it positively or negatively. Okay, so far you might think that, all right, well, why do we need the endocrine system if it's indirect and slow and the nervous system must be better because it's direct and fast? Well, those are the positives of the nervous system. The negative about it is that the message is only lasting for a short time and it's only affecting few people, or in the case of the body, few cells, few neurons. In the endocrine system, the message lasts for a long time, and it's affecting many people or many cells. As you can see, many people, and the message is staying posted for a long time in case there's going to be a message for it. And not everybody's going to respond, only the people with receptors for that message that are going to receive it. As opposed to here, it's just a short phone call or a short text and just a few people, just me or maybe somebody else, but not as many as you can reach here on Facebook. How does the message travel? In the nervous system, message travels to the space here. What is that space called? That space is called the synapse, right? Let's say the space from New York or Chicago to the Caribbean. That would be the synapse. In the endocrine system, it travels through what? It's going to travel through the blood. So... The message gets dumped into the blood and it travels and makes its way to the rest of the body. So over here we have a direct communication and over here we have an indirect goes here and then it can leave and go to different cells of the body. Now one last thing. How is the communication happening? In the body it's happening through chemicals. 
For example, what are chemicals? Well, we have epinephrine, also known as what? Also known as adrenaline. We also have norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline. And you can have both of these chemicals in both systems. However, when the chemicals are over in the nervous system, what do you call them? You call them neurotransmitters meters right because they are in the ner nervous system and they are transmitting messages when these same exact chemicals are over here in the endocrine system you don't call them neurotransmitters anymore you call them hormones and there are different chemicals in different systems as well too but this is just a nomenclature that is used when the chemical is in the blood it is called a hormone when it's traveling through a synapse it is called a neurotransmitter and here's a little summary. Let's put together a little chart in case you want to take a screenshot at it. On the left side, you have the nervous system. On the right side, the endocrine system. And then down the middle in blue, you have the categories for comparison. I hope this helps. Thank you. And again, if you need to contact me, you have my email, my website, or my Twitter. Take care.